The truism is that it's the worst job in politics. It's a truism for a reason. In office, but not in charge, the leader of the opposition is the permanent understudy of British public life, and most of them fail. But since Starmer's election, he has resurrected Labour's cadaverous opinion poll ratings. Still, some worry a ceiling appears to have been reached, or worse. Labour's ratings have sharply increased since Starmer became leader, but the rise has stalled. We see a similar pattern with Starmer's personal ratings, his negatives starting to climb quite sharply over the last few months, and Boris Johnson has once again overtaken Starmer on the preferred Prime Minister stakes. But many leaders of the opposition never get into positive territory at all, or only fleetingly. Ed Miliband managed a few months in positive territory. Even Cameron's positive ratings disappeared after a year. Labour old hands say then that this is nothing to worry about. For Keir Starmer in a year to not just have got us back on equal terms in, in the polls, we were 26 points behind, by the way, but also he's the first leader, I think, since Tony Blair, who's got a personal rating higher than the, than the current Prime Minister, who, who has been all too often over the last 10 years the leader of the Conservative Party. And that is an, a terrific achievement in his first year. And yet... Not only are the Tories just about still ahead, but they're now pulling a bit further ahead. And, and Keir Starmer's personal ratings are starting to dip a little. Yeah, I don't think that should concern Keir in the sense that, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, I, I think it's very difficult for governments to actually go down in the polls, given that most people, in Britain in, anyway, give them the benefit of the doubt. Why has the United and of course, Starmer hasn't been able to campaign, hasn't been able to make a conference speech, sometimes unable to leave his own home. And he's had to navigate a Covid politics where to be seen to commit politics may be a sin. But overall, I welcome this statement. I believe the government is trying to do the right thing. But there are those who whisper that there's not enough politics within the man to begin with, that he hasn't the bite of his successful predecessors, that his critique of the Johnson government has been one anchored in competence, just to the point that through the vaccine programme, the government has shown it has it. One of the critiques of Keir Starmer this year has been, despite the fact that he's clearly a very competent figure, uh, someone who many people can imagine being Prime Minister, that perhaps he's a bit too loyally, a little bit too cautious the public square and the so-called court of public opinion are actually very different from a, a, a court room. Um, even PMQs, um, uh, where people say Keir has been a, a, a very able performer, even PMQs, Prime Minister's Questions, is not the same as courtroom advocacy. But in a sense, those, um, those critiques and those conversations are, are Westminster bubble stuff. And what I'm looking for is not really that. What I'm looking for is the offering. What I'm looking for is the great, big-hearted, optimistic offering to the British people that says it was Labour um, that did it after World War II. It was Labour that, that, that built the welfare state. And that's the offer to which Starmer will turn tomorrow. That he will, we're told, start to map out the intellectual basis of a Starmer Labour government of what social democracy will look like in the 2020s. That he will say that there can be no return to business as usual or the failed conservative ideology of the past. Now, you may think this sounds rather rum. Can Labour credibly talk of a failed conservative ideology when they have so, that is, the Conservatives, transformed before our eyes, moved away from the free market, become, in many cases, born-again status? Well, talk to those around Starmer, and they think that in the long term, that isn't going to happen, that the Conservatives haven't bought into a fundamentally new version of political economy, that... In the medium term, at least, Rishi Sunak and others will start to argue for spending cuts, for deficit reduction. That will become a key plank, once again, of our politics. And that is the opening that Labour, starting tomorrow, can start to prize open. And the economic crisis will have a much longer tail, I suspect, than the public health crisis uh, that, that, COVID, that COVID has brought about. But I think this is, a, this is a good time to start talking about priorities with the long tail of inequality and insecurity, with the end of a, the furlough system, which was going to cause all sorts of disruptions in our economy, with the, with the regional inequalities that post-COVID life will reveal, there's so much that's going to be uh, a re an area for reasonable disagreement between the opposition and, and the Conservative government. 
Many seem to think that Keir Starmer looks and sounds the part of a Prime Minister. But only two leaders of the opposition have made that leap since 1994. And it isn't yet clear that he plays that part nearly as well. Lewis Goodall, in a moment I'll be joined by James Snyder, co-founder of Momentum and former director of strategic communications for Jeremy Corbyn and Anna Turley, the former Labour MP for Redcar. But first I'm joined by Jonathan Reynolds, the Shadow Work and Pension Secretary. Uh, good evening, Jonathan Reynolds. First of all, um, given the various crises in the pandemic, from PPE to schools to care homes to track and trace and even to Dominic Cummings, given all that... Why is it that the Conservatives are not only ahead in the polls, but pulling further ahead? Well, look, if you look at where the Labour Party is today, based on where we were a year ago, I think actually the rate of progress has been uh, fantastic. And I certainly uh, feel much more comfortable about where we are today. If you look at governments around the world, incumbent governments have got a boost. As you see in a national crisis, people rally around the government. They want the government to succeed. And we want the government's COVID strategy to succeed. Nobody wants to, to continue the disruption to people's lives, the loss that we have all felt. So that is natural. If you look at the poll that, that it really does count, which is, does the public see we've got a new leader? Yes, they have seen that. Do they like him? Yes, they do. Do they see him as a potential prime minister? Yes, they do. Now, I've known some good people who've been the leader of the Labour Party who haven't had poll ratings so, like that. So on that, yes, I think that's a good position for us to be in a year on. And you acknowledge that the government's done a very good job on the vaccine, because as I say, it's not just about the government being ahead in the polls, it's about pulling the head, just pulling ahead, despite the fact that people know who Keir Starmer is and think that he might be a trustworthy leader. Tories are pulling ahead just now. Well, look, we've been ahead in the polls and lost big elections. I, I don't think, frankly, people should look too much at where things are right now, except for so, the fact that we know they've noticed we've got a new leader and they like him so, quite a lot. In terms of your question about the handling of the pandemic, now, if you look at where this country has got to, tragically with the highest death toll in Europe and the biggest recession of any major economy, what Keir is going to say tomorrow is, yes, that is about decisions the government have made in the pandemic, but it's also about the country we had going into this crisis, the inequality, the poverty, the insecurity in the workplace. And that is why, when we're talking now about what should come after the pandemic, Keir is going to say we cannot go back to business as usual. Yes, he we says... We have to deliver something he, he, better, and only Labour can do that. He says, under my leadership, Labour's priority will also be financial responsibility. So what is more important, spending what it takes to repair Britain or reducing the massive deficit? It's about spending on the things that matter. We've seen this government spend very large Unlimited. sums of money on things that frankly haven't worked, like test and trace. So what Keir is going to say tomorrow are the priorities that we would have to make that difference. But there can be no return to austerity. People always forget in these type of discussions, it's not just about spending cuts and tax rises to get a grip of the deficit. It's about shrinking that debt as a proportion of GDP, shrinking it as a proportion of the economy. And that requires growth. And I would just say we cannot think that we'll get to where we need to be by ignoring rising levels of child poverty, heading towards five million people, five million children, sorry. And that uh, will take and that will prison. take spending. And that will take spending. And I wonder about the whole radicalism of that, because what he says he's going to do, according to the speech tomorrow, is going to reverse uh, the planned cuts to universal credit, which will benefit six million families by a thousand pounds a year. That is only taking it back to pre-austerity rates. That is not a radical agenda. Well, you're right to say that there has been yeah. in Social Security a, a very punitive set of settlements for many years. I don't deny that. But that commitment on universal credit, which is obviously directly in my brief, yes, that is absolutely the right thing to do for British families. I mean, let's just not forget, you've got to go back to the Great Depression to find a government that was willing to cut out of work support in a major recession. But that is also the right thing for the economy, because otherwise you'd be taking six billion pounds worth of spending that would be spent in local shops and on local services out of the economy. Now that threatens so, so, so the point the that is, I return to the original question, which is you'll spend what it takes to, the, to repair Britain the way you want to repair it rather than being concerned about drawing away from the deficit, about reducing no, the deficit. Think, think you the cannot presumably tackle... in the short term do both. You can't do the short term, do both in the short term. Well, I'd say you can do both, Kirsty, because if you look at where we've been for the last few years, if you look at the George Osborne plan on austerity and its plan to tackle the deficit, it didn't work. It didn't work. And you can't find anyone now saying that's the right way forward. You can't find the IMF or the OECD or major publications who specialise in this area. They all agree that isn't the right way forward. So let's surely learn the lessons of the past. But the way forward to tackle both the national finances 
and the opportunity that people need in this country is to say, look, let's not go back to what we had going into it. Let's not have a prime minister who doesn't even know that child poverty is rising and doesn't seem to care anything about it. Let's not be food bank Britain. Let's be a Britain with opportunity, hope, security for everybody. After every major crisis in this country's well, history, we've come out with something better. If David, Blunk is, if, if David Blunkett is saying tonight, as he did, that he wants to know what Labour stands for, surely that's a bit of an indictment of a former, such a former senior figure in the Labour Party, in the centre-right, saying, even now, all these months after Keir Starmer joined, he doesn't know what Labour stands for. No, I don't think that this is unfair at all. I think what we all know is when you've got a new leader, they have to set out their, their new territory, how they want to take the party and the country forward. There have been restrictions on us in the pandemic, but in terms of what we've been able to do to challenge the government where they should have been challenged, to make sure the government's response is as good as it could be, and if they'd listened to us more, I think their response would have been even better. But yes, at this stage, now let's be clear, if at the beginning of this pandemic, we were talking about the long-term aspirations for the Labour Party and what we wanted to do, that wouldn't have been the right time, but this is the right moment. We're at a stage with the vaccination program where we can look to the future, but we also have the budget. We also have a very big set of elections this year. This is the right time. This is the right moment. People know Key is new. They like him. This Thank is the you. chance to really set out his vision and show what the Thank you have. very much, Jonathan Reynolds.